All right, guys. Sorry, I've been late with the news. Sorry, I haven't been informing you guys what's been going on with these migrant caravans. But it seems as if another caravan is on its way, being created as we speak. And now, Caribbean um, Caribbean countries are going to join in. Now, we're talking about Cuba and other and other Caribbean um, countries that are along the the Latin America coast, on the on the on the east side of the coast. Um, this new this new Caribbean. Uh, the Caribbean people that are going to join this new caravan that's coming up in a few in a few months or a few weeks, I think I think they said like a month or something. They're gonna actually they're actually saying that they're gonna come legally and they're gonna do everything right and they're gonna do everything by the book. Well, guess what? I mean, the other caravan said the same thing, but still somehow they always you know f it up and they always do what they want to do. I mean, it really doesn't matter at this point anymore because honestly, it it just needs to stop you know what i mean it just needs to stop we all know this a couple uh, uh i think two days ago here in mexicali they even stopped um the line of the walk the walking line not the car line the walking line to the united states here in mexicali um right here then the, it's right here uh, here i'll show you the news right now let me just play this one migrantes centroamericanos y cubanos podrían unirse y formar parte de una nueva caravana rumbo al norte de nuestro país Yeah. So now they're saying that Cubans are, are going to join in on this with the Central Americans. So they, they, they noticed that they could have like a little permit to let them cross into, um, into Mexico and stay as a tourist, tourism, for 20 days. So these new car this new caravan is actually going to improvise and in like is they're actually going to, yeah, they're going to test this, not even test, they're going to use this as um, a way to, to just cross Mexico and, you know, go to the United States. Los migrantes cubanos dieron a conocer que se podrían unir al grupo de centroamericanos que se encuentran pernotando en el Parque Miguel Hidalgo del municipio de Tapachula, donde yeah. iniciarán una nueva caravana denominada Caravana Centroamérica Caribe. So the, the new caravan is going to call um, Car uh, Central American Caribbean Caravan. That's, that's going to be the name of the new caravan that's going to come up. I also wanted to inform you guys that in Chiapas, the people and the government have stopped giving aid to these people. Or the caravan, the migrants, they have stopped because it is a big pain in the ass. You know what I mean? It's a big pain. Having a bunch of people come, use the resources, and then just leave. Like, that's, that's, that's some BS, right? Well... I wanted to inform you guys on that. Let me show you guys the video where uh, right here in Mexicali, they, they closed the, the, the line because these migrants wanted to pass through there. Like if they had the visas, passports, like what, what are you guys doing? But let me show you guys that video right now. This, this, one's, this one's done. Okay, so I was looking for the video and I guess they actually brought it down. I guess um, someone deleted it or it was just brought down. But I have the proof right here. A uh, person asked, is it true that they closed the line and it was uh, the Hondurians' fault, the migrants? And people here are saying yes it was close for a few minutes yes i was there and yes we almost did two hours and then a bunch of people were just just commenting some some were mad por culpa de los humanos que los queridos amigos humanos que se tienen estabilidad en su vida ah. adriana perdón pero no es así she's saying that um that they're just looking for stability in their life and whatnot well that's i just wanted to show you guys this that they did try to cross right here in mexicali and they actually had the line closed because they're trying to force themselves through the the walk-in, the new walk-in that they have actually um, here in the in the west in the west port of Mexicali at Calexico. All right, and um, this news this was on nineteen the nineteenth of March. Um, America's paying for it. Mexican thieves rob U.S. border fence wire and use it to secure their own homes. Now this is in Tijuana. All right, let's start reading the article. Enterprising Mexican thieves of south of the U.S. border fence have stolen some of its barbed wire and used it to fortify homes in Tijuana, a local police uh, chief said. Catching the thieves in the act has been proven difficult. President Donald Trump ordered the security fence separating San Diego from Tijuana topped with razor-sharp concertina wire back in November as the United States braced for the arrival of multiple caravans of illegal immigrants. No climbers anymore under our administration, he boasted. Several months later, sessions of the wire are missing and turning up on people's homes in Tijuana. 
Police Chief Marco Antonio Sotomayor uh, Mesqua told local news outlets of Millennial, Millennial News. We know about the theft of barbed wire because United States authorities have requested our help, Sotomayor said. The chief explained that the wire is, str is stronger, sharper, and of better quality than anything sold in Mexican stores. A thumbs up of sorts for Trump's beloved um, American uh, manufacturing industry. But, in the spirit of the innocent until proven guilty principle, the police chief added they couldn't help their American colleagues as the thieves usually manage to slip away from the fence before his officers arrive on the scene. Meanwhile, footage from Mexican television shows the Tijuana house is newly wired up. And I've seen I've seen the video. Uh, it's they pa they're passing by houses where they have literally the wire like you can tell it's brand new and yeah they have it on their fence. Okay, so U.S. contractors were busy at work replacing the missing sections of wire on Monday morning. The Los Angeles Times reported its reporters saw homes just feet away on the Mexican side decked out in what appeared to be freshly stolen barbed wire. Yeah, I've seen that. Unsurprisingly, none of the residents were keen to explain where their new home security upgrades came from. Reynaldo Gonzalez Mora of Tijuana's Border Liaison Unit, I think I, ho I hope I said that, Li Liaison Unit has said that 15 to 20 suspects, all of them Mexican citizens, have been arrested over the wire theft thus so far. So that's, that's good, that's good. Most people, were, uh, most people who have been deported from the United States uh, and people who have had problems with drug addiction and live mostly on the street are the ones that are robbing this um, concertina wire. So <laughs> this is pretty funny and ironic. But at the same time, like, look how crazy this is, okay? All right, so this man on the left is ex-president Enrique Peña Nieto of Mexico. And on the right is his lovely, soon-to-be ex-wife. And she is divorcing Peña Nieto, but she is putting strict conditions. And those strict conditions are 12 years of private aerial transport and for him to buy her and her family 35 uh, latest luxury model cars. So she is doing this because she knows that she's going to get heat from people. She knows that the people are going to, um, you know, harass them, harass her and her family, honestly. There's a lot to go. There's a lot to talk about, but I have to be quick in this one because I have more news. This author, um, San Juan Martinez of the book La Due Soy La Dueña, knows about this whole relationship. And there's been suspicion that she was actually chosen by Enrique Peneto and her and his associates to marry Angelica Rivera, aka right here in Mexico, she's known as La Gaviota. It is said that this man is gay. I mean Enrique Peña Nieto. And that he made a secret contract with Televisa with this woman to be her his wife for the terms of presidency. That's so messed up. That is so messed up. And now, what I'm telling you is so ironic is that she knows how hard he, he has bitten into Mexico. He, she knows how hard he has sucked out money from Mexico. So that is why she is asking. No, she's not asking. She's demanding 12 years of private, um, uh, private jet, basically, and 35 latest luxury cars for her and her family. 35! <laughs> That's insane! She's going to start her own dealership. All right, on to the next one. On to the next news. And in this video, which is very, very new, AMLO, president of Mexico, asked the king of Spain and the pope to say sorry for the events that happened about 500 years ago when Hernán Cortés invaded Latin America, specifically the Mayan and uh, Inca, Inca culture. You know what I mean? The Aztec culture, sorry. So it's... It's, and he then goes to say that, that no, he's not going to say sorry. And I'm thinking that, yeah, it's because it's about 500 years ago. And he's probably thinking like, whoa, it's in the past, bro. Just let it go. But um, uh, AMLO is, is um, kind of stuck on this topic because he thinks that, you know, even if it happened about 500 years ago, they, they never said sorry. And now that he's president, he wants them to say sorry and apologize so that they could continue to have, um, they could continue to be uh, good business, you know, good trade and good... Just be good, good talks between each other. Have good relationship. I'm not going to play the whole video, but we should. The message that we're going to hear from President López Obrador is about these letters sent to Pope Francis and the Rey of Spain, just to ask that he pardon for the Spanish conquest. Yeah. The government of Spain responded that they lament profoundly. So Spain conquistadors with Hernán Cortés when they sacked uh, the pyramids and took all the gold and whatnot. Yeah, that's about that. <laughs> 
Thank you.